Hello my dear students, welcome to the MS Science Academy, myself Meenu Srivastav and today we are going to discuss about the uncouplers or we can say the inhibitors of the oxidative phosphorylation. Before going to the uncouplers, first we want to discuss the what is the couplers or what is the uh, link reactions or what is the uh, uh, function of the couplers. First is the couplers are those proteins or those substances which can link the electron transport and ATP synthesis. As in the electron transport chain and in the oxidative phosphorylation reaction, we have already seen that the electron shuffling take place and when the electron get accumulated uh, on the outer surface of the inner mitochondrial membrane, so there is an electron gradient will be created. So, this electron gradient will be compensated by the complex 5 that is the ATP synthase and when the electron reshuffling uh, will be occur in the uh, through the complex 5 then the ATP generation take place. So, the electron shuffling is the electron through the electron transport chain and the ATP synthesis this is the oxidative phosphorylation. So, here the two reaction in the ATP synthesis, first is the electron transport chain and second is the ATP synthesis. Both reaction will are uh, will be linked. So those proteins or those elements will be uh, uh, will be proceed such kind of reaction or will be helped to do such kind of the reactions are known as couplers. But what are the uncouplers? The uncouplers or delinkers are those proteins or those chemical compounds which can interrupt or delink of these two reactions. First is the electron transport chain interruption and second is the production of ATP synthesis means the oxidative phosphorylation. So the main thing the delinks or delinker or the uncoupler are those agents which can uncouple or delink the both uh, simultaneously both the reactions. Now come to the initial part the mitochondrial transport of electrons mitochondrial transport of electrons is tightly coupled with oxidative phosphorylation as if you don't know about the oxidative phosphorylation, just type the oxidative phosphorylation MS Science Academy, you can get my lecture. Now, the oxidative phosphorylation and electron transport is tightly coupled. Okay, it means oxidative and phosphorylation proceed simultaneously. Means the oxidation. What is the oxidation? As I have discussed in the just previous lecture, the loss of electron is known as the loss of electron is known as the loss of electron is known as the oxidation. So, in the electron transport chain, the electron is shuffling from one substance to the another substance, okay, one substance to the another substance. So, when this first substance lost this electron, it get oxidized. When the second substance lost its electron, it get oxidized. So, in this oxidation, in this reaction, there are the certain compounds, it means the oxidation and phosphorylation proceed simultaneously. So, in the couple reaction, the oxidation means the electron shuffling and the ATP synthesis, both reaction occur simultaneously. Okay. So, there are the certain compounds, they can uncouple or delink the electron transport from the oxidative phosphorylation. So, these compounds can delink uh, the electron transport chain and from the oxidative phosphorylation okay such compound are known as the uncouplers they allow the oxidation of substrate without atp <coughs> formation means the oxidation will take place the oxidation will take place the electron transport uh, <coughs> sorry the electron shuffling will occur but but when the electron get accumulated the uncoupler disturb that accumulation the uncoupler disturb that accumulation as the electron get accumulated on the outer side of the inner in mitochondrial membrane the uncouplers just disturb that electron gradient how they can act, act their action let's see 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल दे इंक्रीज द परमेबिलिटी ऑफ इनर माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियल मेमरेन टू प्रोटोन ओके एस द इलेक्ट्रॉन गेट एक्यूमुलेटेड सो द माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियल मेमरेन जस्ट द परमेबिलिटी ऑफ एज वी नो एज वी नो द माइट्रो इनर माइट्रोकॉन्ड्रियल मेमरे इज इन परमेबल टू द प्रोटोन बट द अनकपलर कैन इंक्रीज द परमेबिलिटी of inner mitochondrial membrane so the protons which accumulate on the outer surface of the inner mitochondrial membrane just shift towards inside the matrix okay so like this they disturb the electron gradient second they are lipids lipid soluble they are lipophilic as we know the membrane nature is the lipophilic or lipid soluble so these compounds get embedded into the membrane and just take the proton and just leave into the matrix just take just embedded into the just they embedded into the inner mitochondrial membrane and take the protons and take the protons and leave into the matrix side okay <coughs> these agents bind the hydrogen ion means the protons means the protons and transport across the membrane so they stop the generation of proton gradient so the proton gradient which have to be created for the atp synthesis which is the compulsory for the atp synthesis these uncouplers get disturb this kind of the proton gradient getting my point so it will stop the synthesis of atp by oxidative phosphorylation okay now here the uncoupler proteins provide an alternative route for proteins to pass into the matrix to the membrane uncouplers can act by changing the permeability can uh, just uh, embedded into the membrane and can change the uh, pathway can change the uh, they can provide the protons uh, or they can take the protons by any kind of alternative routes so that the proton gradient get disturbed okay here the uncoupler stop the synthesis of atp the uncoupler stop the synthesis of atp by oxidative phosphorylation okay so that's why that's why they are also known as the inhibitors of the oxidative phosphorylation getting my point okay some are considered the inhibitor of the oxidative phosphorylation and the uncoupler are same and some will take uh, separately okay <laughs> rather the energy derived from the electron transport chain is released as heat now come to this point as i have discussed in the electron transport chain the when the electron shuffling occur when the electron shuffling take place the in the complex one around 12 kilocalories energy is uh, generated in the complex third around 10 kilocalories is generated so this energy will utilize during the electron shuffling but during the electron shuffling the energy is also generated but as the electron shuffling get disturbed so this energy which is derived from the electron transport chain is released as heat is released as heat so this such kind of the heat generation is known as the non shivering thermogenesis because in our body there is no shivering nothing occur but the temperature will increase but our body let's see our body you how utilize how how can our body utilize such kind of the stupid reaction you you just think our body utilize this uncoupling reaction for generation of heat but one question you in your mind should erase uh, one question in your mind should raise that uh, how our energy how our body uh, utilize this heat in the newborn baby my dear child in the newborn baby okay in the newborn babies which uh, uh, the baby which can't able to save from cold and other reactions so in brown tissue as you know the newborn baby has the brown adipose tissue so in the brown adipose tissue such kind of the uncoupling reaction will occur so the heat will generate so our body will utilize such kind of the stupid reaction for saving our life okay and in the hibernating animals also such kind of the uncoupling reactions will produce so much heat so to save their life okay so it is an it is the vital in many biological situation for example uncoupling occur naturally in brown tissue not brown tissue it's adipose tissue brown adipose tissue 
the example is the thermogenin thermogenin is the endogenous protein it's a protein okay found in the brown adipose tissue newborn babies and hibernating animals okay now the uncoupled are of the two types first is the physiological and second is the chemical the physiological uncouplers are the like thyroxine like long chain free fatty acid and the conjugated bilirubin and thermogen but in the chemical like 2,4 dinitrophenol 2,4 dinitrocrisol and pentachlorophenol FCCP fluorocarbonyl cyanide phenyl hydrazine aspirin second compound that is the aspirin calcium CCCP carbonyl cyanide metachlorophenyl hydrazine okay so such kind of the chemicals which are utilized for uncouplers or which can uh, act as a uncoupler now we will see the another some compounds which can act as a uncouplers and the inhibitors of the oxidative phosphorylation let's see now come to the other inhibitors they can inhibit the oxidative phosphorylation as well as they interrupt the proton gradient also here first is the oligo another one that is the oligomycin it's a kind of antibiotic and it prevents the mitochondrial oxidation as well as the phosphorylation what is the mitochondrial oxidation what is the phosphorylation uh, that i have explained so i think there will be no confusion about the oxidation and the phosphorylation okay how it can work it bind with the ATP synthase. The ATP synthase is present in the complex 5. Okay. So, as it bind with the ATP synthase, the ATP synthase will not able to just uh, 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 translocate the protons. Okay. So, thus, uh, uh, so it block the proton channel. So, by blocking the proton channel, the it prevent the translocation of proton into the matrix. Okay. So, the protons get accumulated at higher concentration in the intermembrane space so the electron transport chain ultimately stop okay now second one another one that another one uh, that is the attractylocyte attractylocyte it's a kind of antibiotic and it's a plant glycoside it extract from a mold okay it inhibit the oxidative phosphorylation but through the another mechanism <coughs> as <coughs> as for the ATP generation required ADP is essential and what I am saying for the ATP generation ADP is required for ATP generation ADP is required so for the ATP uh, for uh, just transporting the ATP and ADP particularly adenine nucleotide carrier adenine nucleotide carrier system must be essential so attractylocyte what it will do it will just terminate or just inhibit such kind of the transport system okay adenine nucleotide carrier system okay so it inhibit the adenine nucleotide carrier system and block the adequate supply of adp thereby preventing the phosphorylation so by inhibiting such kind of the carrier system the adp is not available so if the adp is not available the atp will not generate getting my point clear okay so such kind of the attractylocyte will be act like this another antibiotics are present which can inhibitors of the phosphorylation valinomycin and the gramycidin there are some inophores actually some uh, some are uh, just including the inophores as an uncoupler and some are just taking uh, in the inhibitors of electron transport chain okay so uh, there will be one <laughs> controversy but i have included in the uncouplers okay you can include in the uncouplers you can include in the inhibitors of etc whatever inophores basically as the name suggests inophores means they are just somewhere linked with the ions transformation uh, uh, translocation so they just disrupt the proton gradient across the inner mitochondrial membrane okay so by just uh, disrupting or just interrupting the uh, proton gradient they act by they act as a inhibitors okay i hope you enjoyed my lecture i think all concept will be clear now okay after just uh, uh, getting my lecture i hope you, you have enjoyed any doubt kindly ask in the comment section otherwise please like share, and subscribe thank you